What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Welcome back, folks, to the Harsh Language Podcast. Glad to be here. <laughs> what episode are we on now, boys? It's like, 86. Nah, it's like 49. It's 40 something. I don't remember where we're at. I can tell you right now. I think it's like, hang on, can I guess? 47. I'm thinking 47. 45. 45, okay. Children. It's 46. Yep. We're actually at like 50 because we had like several technical issues with episodes. Technically, yep. we are. This is a 50th yep. show for sure. Yeah, 50th celebration. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we should. Uh, what is it? Uh, next anniversary week should soon. have been our 52nd episode. Okay. All yeah. right. It's all right. Let's pretend that never happened. We're at episode what day is it? 46. What day is the uh, anniversary? Uh, I think we published the first one on like the 28th. May 28th, right? Oh, is it May? I thought it was, I thought it was May. Maybe it was April. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember nothing. Oh, boy. <laughs> How's everybody's week? <sighs> Weekend? What's everybody up to? It was good. I went to, I had um, April Korean 28th. barbecue Ooh. this weekend. The Batman. It was April 28th? Yep. yep. The Batman. Never forget, folks. So it was really like April something that was when we started, but yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'll never remember. That'd be funny. Yeah, we gotta go back and listen to that first episode and see how. It was an audio only one, right? Yeah, it was. I don't yep. think we were recording video yet. Not yet. No, no, not yet. Came up with this beautiful solution though for a video. Mm hmm. The genius. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, Korean barbecue, whew, that shit is good. Did you get the chicken? Yeah. Bourbon chicken or some shit? Bourbon? I got KFC, Korean fried chicken. I got bulgogi. I got all kinds of shit. The real KFC, folks. Volcano shrimp, some shit. I oh don't my know. God. It was all kinds of shit. That sounds good. There's a uh, Korean fried chicken chain. I know it's all over the place, but it's here and it's called Bonchon and it is so fucking oh, good. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Oh, God. It I think there's good. one out here. Ginger garlic chicken, baby. Oh, sounds good. So good, so good. You know, I had what a our... bulgogi burrito. I don't know what that is, but it's a burrito, so it's got to be good. It was fire. What's in it? Bulgogi, well, again, onions. I don't know what bulgogi. Cream is. cheese. Oh, it's like a thinly sliced marinated beef. Oh, yeah, it's really good. That sounds good as fuck. Yeah. Big fan. This shit's gooder than a bitch. You ever see that video, Marvin? Yep. The gooder than a bitch show, kid? <laughs> I think you showed that to me, yeah. The banana chip, banana fuckers. God, that's like one of the earliest YouTube videos. <laughs> Speaking of early videos, I've spent the week watching, not videos, but movies. I was, I've was, i had this like, I don't know why, I just every now and then I take these trips down old movie memory lane, but not like old, old movies, but like... Mostly comedies from like the mid to late nineties and then like mm. early two thousands. Yeah. I watched um what did I watch? I watched Road Trip. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's a great movie. It's Road hilarious. Trip. Yeah. It's Todd Phillips who directed the Joker movie. Funny enough, like his early career was all comedies. Oh, I've never seen this. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. So I watched that. I watched um Oh my god, what the fuck else did I watch? It started because I had watched a uh, a movie that I hadn't seen before, but it was like some fucking like Ashton Kutcher like rom-com or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And then I watched Forgetting Sarah Marshall cuz that's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Yep. And then I watched uh what else did I watch? I watched Where the Millers that's a little bit oh, that's a good one. more recent, but fucking, yep. oh, that is such a funny movie. It's actually funny because, you know, Dusty and I have been watching, uh, what am I call it? Ted Lasso. Mm. And it's like, so, right. it's like such a far cry from everything else Jason Sudeikis has done in his career. Like mm -hmm. he's just done a lot of like raunchy comedies and he's just yeah. kind of that guy, but he's like so fucking funny when he's being dirty. <laughs> 
and Ted Lasso is just a much different character. But I, right. yeah. I, when I when I was looking up info on the movie, I saw that apparently a sequel to Where the Millers is in the works. So that'll be fun. Hmm. They're all older now. It's going to be funny to see what's his name all fucking Jack now because he's in Oh, yeah, he's... that's right. <laughs> Learn about all those regrets. Yeah. Nothing. That's right. I hope they bring him back. <laughs> They'll probably bring him back. You have no regrets? Not even one letter? <laughs> that's my credo. Nope. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that fucking guy. Can we just also really quick mention like how unbelievably gorgeous Jennifer Aniston is? It's like actually not even real. Like just for yeah, I... yeah. Come on, Marvin. Yeah, I, I, she ain't all that to me. Stop it. She just has not like she. She's up there though with actresses who have aged. Yeah, I was very just gonna well. say yeah, her like, and like. S- some actresses get up into their fifties and they go yeah they down start to fall off and... yeah that's true especially yeah. oh no I can't say that never mind <laughs> what were you gonna say <laughs> nope all right be saying that fair enough we don't want to get canceled <laughs> don't be canceling us Marvin <laughs> speaking of getting canceled uh I saw something this week on TikTok that really took me for a loop and I don't. I didn't investigate further into it because I really kind of don't want to, but apparently <laughs> um, Morgan Freeman has like a long history of being just like this creepy fucking in a, like bad guy, according to, to some to, shit. To people, to women? Well, apparently he married, or apparently, apparently he had an affair with his like step-granddaughter or something mm. like that. Or, or not. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. His 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 step granddaughter was was murdered. I think. And he had an supposedly he had an affair with her boyfriend who murdered her after the fact, is what I saw. Her boyfriend. Yeah. So, he's... <laughs> so yeah, he had like a gay relationship, and I was nice. like, I was like, there's no way. Like people just definitely make this shit up. But that sounds crazy. That sounds like a fucking fanfic. Well. It does, but the thing of it is, and I, and I kind of said this to you earlier, like, these Gen Zers, bro, they fucking go hard. Like, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> and they are out here, like, exposing all sorts of shit. So yeah. if, it's, if something is on TikTok like this, I don't know, I tend to believe it for some reason. But I just pulled TikTok it up here. TikTok starts... Like worse than like high school rumors. Like all it takes <laughs> is one person, and yeah. then it's like, oh my god, it's a million views on TikTok. So you can't, you gotta like really deep dive the TikTok lore. Yeah, but this is something that I feel like was too crazy to make up. So I look like here it is. So the guy's name was Lamar Davenport. The boyfriend of Morgan Freeman's late granddaughter has been sentenced to twenty years in state prison for her death. Lamar Davenport, thirty three, was sentenced Thursday. This was like back in 2019. He stabbed her to death 25 times in her New York apartment in 2015. But then, okay, here's the article. <laughs> Morgan Freeman had affair with step-granddaughter, alleged murderer. Before she was what murdered, Morgan fuck? Freeman's step-granddaughter told her boyfriend turned killer that the actor had been secretly sleeping with her, confirming years-old claims about the illicit affair, according to defense lawyers. And he got jealous. Uh I don't know. It's some can't crazy shit. Can't be fucking shit. on my Morgan Freeman. I don't like. <laughs> it just it can't be Morgan Freeman. This can't be real. I just don't believe it. Hey, I'm more hung up on the fact that Morgan Freeman is gay than anything. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> can't be fucking on my Morgan <laughs> Freeman. <laughs> Dusty looks real confused. What are your thoughts on this, Dusty? He's thinking what I'm thinking. Morgan Freeman's gay. Yeah. And not heard anything about this, I guess. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. News, no, news, nothing at all. I, I don't know. He was yeah. God. He played God. He played God. He played fucking... <laughs> that's, he's done that's so weird. many things. <laughs> he's fucking... What's the fucking old school movie? Old school you movie? Uh, Stan, um, lean on me. Shawshank? Lean on me. Lean on me. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was in that. You never seen Lean on me? I have. Of course I have. Oh my god! But I thought you were going to mention Shawshank because I was going to mention no, I mean, Shawshank. No, of course Shawshank. I'm surprised you bring that up because I was yeah I was wondering actually because <laughs> Dan was singing the song the other day and I was like I wonder if Marvin's seen that movie. What song was I singing? <laughs> Lean on me. Was I? Yeah. 
Why was I thinking? That? I don't know. It was during that one Civ game, I think. Oh. <laughs> Owen lost again, by the way, Marvin. You know, one v one. Yeah. Damn. Made him quit. I was doing so good. Oof. Yeah, I can't. My boy, fucking Ellis Redding, Red, aka, he can't be fucking with no murderers. I, I refuse to believe it. <laughs> but yeah, so I just been I spent the week watching a bunch of old movies that I hadn't seen in a really long time. Really good, I feel like, every now and then to, like, revisit an old classic. Uh, oh, yeah. Road Trip is so fucking funny. I forgot how funny Tom Green is as, like, a human being. <laughs> and how... You're probably a little too young, Marvin, but there was, like, a point in, like, the early 2000s, Tom Green was, like, a god. No, I remember, like, uh... What's the one? The Tom Green show? I'm... No, the movie... Freddy Got Fingered? Uh, yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> Daddy, would you like some sausage? <laughs> yeah. His show, dude, was so popular. And then, like, he was jackass before jackass was jackass. Mm. It just fucking going around. I'll never forget the one where he was in the bubble. Do you guys remember that? You ever see that, Marvin? No. Oh, I gotta uh -uh. send it to you. Bubble boy. Yeah, he was in, like, a huge bubble, like, almost like a fucking giant. Just rolling around. But he goes he, to... He, he goes had to, no immunities. Yeah, he goes to so a softball a game, and he goes... <laughs> he's like, I'm allergic to the environment. I want to play softball. And he's just in the middle of the softball game, and they're all, like, fucking pushing him around. And he's like, but I'm... Oh, a, my God. And then one guy, like, cuts it open, and he starts... He's like, my, my allergies! <laughs> my allergies! <laughs> oh, man, he's fucking funny. What's, what's no, Tom Green up to? Happen. What's he been doing recently? Anything? I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, he's touring. I don't know. Uh, oh, so when, you, when you were talking about 90s stuff, that made me think of Tom Green because he, I don't know, you remember the Tom Green stuff from MTV back in the day? Dave? Yeah, I, that's what I was just talking about. Yeah. yeah. He's touring uh, doing mean, what? He did this. Uh, oh, he does stand up. Oh, okay. He, he does yeah, stand up. He, hasn't done any movies in a while. he has a Twitter, and last year I think he was on Joe Rogan, one of the few Rogan episodes I've listened to in recent memory, but. <laughs> He was doing this like road, like during COVID, he was doing this like road trip thing, like this mini, like mini bus type of yeah. tour thingy that he was doing, like living on the mm -hmm. road. I don't know, it was something like that. But yeah, he couldn't, he had to stop his show because everybody recognized him. Like he was so big yep. at that point. <laughs> yeah, they just troll him. That's what killed him. That's kind of what happened to Jackass too, like too eventually. Famous. Too famous. Yeah. Like Jackass, yeah. if you know, if you like look at the course of the show in the movies, like they eventually stopped doing. A lot of skits where they like fuck with people yeah. and just started doing like just crazy like physical shit like of them <laughs> getting hurt because like how do you fuck with people is just recognizing you constantly right yeah oh man but yeah those were the glory days you guys been watching anything good or what uh what have i been watching no i heard about this show the undoing that i want to start i heard that was a good hmm. show hmm. but uh, i haven't actually started yet but... i haven't heard of that I think it is a, I forgot the network it is on. It's a new show? HBO Max. No, it's not. It's actually not. It's from 2020. It's Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant. Mm. Apparently, it's a really good show. Oh, it's a whodunit. Mm -hmm. I'm a big whodunit fan. It's like Clue. A modern twist to a classical whodunit tale when the life of a wealthy New York therapist turns upside down after she and her family get involved with a murder case. Mm. I might have to add this to the list. Yeah. Yeah. C's mom told me about it. She's okay. been like basically hounding me to watch it. So I gotta. Does she have a good track it. record? Mm. It's important. Because I know there's a with few. With shows, yes. Okay. With movies, mm. Okay, because there's a few people in Not my so life much. that if they tell me to watch something, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. And that shit like goes Owen? through one. Yeah, one was one of them <laughs> for sure. My buddy George, anything he says, oh, man, that was good. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> His version of good is like everybody else's version of terrible. Oof. This looks good, though. Only seven episodes or something. Oh, that's so weird. Two, four, six. Six episodes. Six. That's good. I like that. Yeah, nice and short. Short and sweet. It's a whodunit, huh? Yep. My favorite type of tale. Speaking of Clue, I've never seen the Clue movie. Have you guys seen the Clue movie? Yes. Yeah, Marvin. I've seen Clue. Is it terrible? No, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Marvin. I've seen... Hey. Oh, shit. Michael McKean is in it. That's our boy. How have you never seen Clue? It's from 1985. So what does that mean? Oh. 
I've seen like no, I've seen like only the 80s movie that you guys have fucking. Yeah. Good thing for this podcast because you'd be in shambles (laughs) if not. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'll be living we're getting life. there, folks. Slowly <laughs> but surely. Yeah, we'll get there. We, we gotta add. We gotta add oh, this to the damn. list. Tim Curry. Oh yeah, Tim Curry. Damn, Dusty, you all caught up on uh, the shows we've been watching, or what? Uh, I think Ted I'm Lasso, an Mandalorian, Yellow Jackets. E- yeah, I think I'm an episode behind on Yellow Jackets. I don't think I've seen episode I didn't, four. Yeah, I didn't watch this week's episode, so yesterday's I didn't watch. Um, so and, how's the Yellow Jackets yeah. been? Uh, the internet has been, like, raving and ranting about it, but I heard you guys, like, eh, second season, not so. Um, I really liked the first season. And then this season, I'm not, not liking it, but it's an, I don't think it's as good as the first season thus far. Mm. Um. I don't know if I did I talk about this where I compared it to Lost. Did I talk about this last week? Yeah, you did. Yep. Yeah, you did. We did. Yeah, it just kind of feels like it's like meandering through these different plot points without any real structure to it. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that eventually, like, they'll start to bring it all together. But there's a lot of different plot points that are all seemingly not connected to one another. Mm. But but the show in the first season presented them all as if they are connected. So it's like, hmm. Okay. Maybe they'll tie it all back in for the the big finale. Maybe. There's also one thing that happened. Might have your mind blown. Maybe. Doubtful. There's one (laughs) thing that happened. uh, I think we talked about this, too. Like, the first season, like, they play around with, like, cannibalism. You're thinking, like, oh. Right. Because they're hot. Like, oh, what do they do out there? Like, they did something. So you Mm -hmm. assume, like, oh, it's cannibalism. But from the trailers and, like, episode previews in the first season, it seemed, like, ritualistic type of shit. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay, shit's going to get weird out there. And now that the shit has finally started to get weird, it doesn't really make any sense. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, it went from like zero to 60, like overnight, and it doesn't make sense of how it got to that point. Because I feel like if the three of us were like stuck in the woods somewhere, it probably wouldn't get to that point. I don't think we'd be ritualistically fucking eating each other and shit. Like, I might eat Dusty because he's got some thick ass thighs, and I have <laughs> to eat him to survive. But I'm not gonna. I'm like I'm gonna be like not enjoying it while I do it. They were there's the, yeah. the cannibalism scene. Spoilers. They're just like arr, arr, arr. like they were Damn. like ferociously eating this dead body, and yeah. it just didn't make any sense. Did you feel that way too, Dusty? Or well, like yeah. I mean, if you're gonna out in the woods, especially out in the winter like that, it's, we're gonna be skin and bones. There ain't gonna be ain't gonna be no meat on my body if we're out there like that. <laughs> it's just the way it happened. Lose some weight. Yeah. But they, yeah, I don't know. It's. I'm I'm losing a little bit of patience with it. Uh, watching it's kind of why I haven't watched the newest episode. Yeah. Like, eh, I, I need to, but eh. there did just didn't seem to be any like explanation for it. Like you would assume the explanation is like, oh, they're starving and desperate, but that's not how it was. Like that's not mm-hmm. why they did it. It was like it was very bizarre. I don't know. Weird. Right. You had to be there. That was that type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you had to un- to see. You understand what I'm saying? You have to really just watch it. Mm. You guys uh, watch Shadow and Bone? No. A Netflix show? No. Nah, that's the one. It's like that fantasy, right? Uh, David Barnes and uh, Jessica May Lee. Yeah. Um, oh, season no, no. one came out a while back. Um, sci fi fantasy show. I don't know. I guess it was COVID or something to delay the second season, but it's been a while. Hmm. Um, it just came out. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting so far. I started watching it with my roommate. Nice. And we okay. watched Beef. As well, it's yeah. actually a great show. I, I, I thought it's, about watching it because I think she's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but I haven't it, watched it yet. It's hilarious. Uh, um, it's Stephen Yoon's new yeah. show. Oh, okay. He survived Lucille, folks. <laughs> Lucille. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the baseball bat, Marvin. Yeah. The famed baseball bat. <laughs> I also watched One Day as a Lion. It's a new movie that came out. What is that? Uh, Frank Grillo, J.K. Simmons, Scott Kahn, Virginia Madsen, uh, Taron Manning. Mm. Pretty good cast. Um, story's all right. I actually saw something with him recently. On So you guys know I'm an Edge user now. And yep. like the Edge homepage is like all like news shit. Like if you open up a new oh, tab. Oh, yeah. And it puts, I turn all that shit off. I should turn it off because it's basically <laughs> like the fucking tabloid section of the internet. Yeah, it's really bad. It's all like clickbaity <laughs> bullshit. 
<laughs> but I saw a headline that I didn't click on, so I don't really know the like the details. But apparently, Frank Grillo made some comments about like how Marvel handled Crossbones, and that like he's not happy about it or something like that. <laughs> I don't really know. Frank, who's this? He's an actor. He's some fucking Guido actor, but he played. He, uh, yeah, he was in Captain America. Oh, that guy. Marvel, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He played. He played Crossbones, and and he's like the guy that had the building dropped on him. Yeah. And like, uh, again, I didn't read the article, but he seems like the type of guy that would pull some fucking Terrence Howard shit where he's like, I was supposed to be the star of Captain <laughs> America. Like, come on, bro. Shut yep. the fuck up. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. But, uh, but yeah, so, um, <laughs> Terrence I, Howard is never going to live that swap down. No, well, now he's actually like a crazy guy. I'm pretty sure we've <laughs> talked about it like a while back, but there's this video of him like trying to like, He's given like a speech to like some fucking government board or something. I'm well, talking. he was doing all right on that show Empire until you yeah, know, that show was well, terrible. Now he's talking oh, sorry, about going go back in time and shit or to the government, or some weird shit. I don't know. Oh, nice. I hope he gets that figured out. Yeah, same. <laughs> I never watched Empire. Not good. Nah, don't waste your time. It's I mean, it's like a network show as well, so. I was told to watch that show with what's his name that's out with Childish Gambino. I can't think Atlanta's of his real good. name. No, no, not Atlanta. I've seen Atlanta. He's on a new show. You've seen Atlanta? Yeah. I like all it. of it? Not all of it, no. I, oh, okay. I watched the first two seasons, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's a new oh, show. Donald Glover? That, yeah, it's a new show that he's on. It's like a, um, like a mystery. Oh, you're talking about Swarm. Swarm, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. Heard, I've had I a, heard mixed things about that, too, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I had a couple The premise is good, me. though. It's like obsessed fans which is always good but yeah those I fucking things those fucking parasocial relationships oh yeah yep we know a lot about those <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny the people that are like those type of people in like crazy streams people or whatnot yeah yeah they would watch something like this like and be like oh my god they're so look at these these, these people are nuts it's like they are those people like you yeah. don't even see <laughs> Well, I don't know if I've told this story on on the podcast before, but there's a streamer that I have watched. I won't name names. Female streamer. She's like a pretty big streamer. And she had a stalker. She told the story on her stream once about the person. She, she couldn't talk about it for a long time because it was like a legal thing going on. Mm. But once the legal thing ended, she like told the story and this guy was like stalking the shit out of her or whatnot. And... What, at the time when it was happening, she talked about having a stalker, and this dude was, like, messaging her, like, oh, I could protect you, blah, 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 and he somehow found out where she lived and, like, showed up to her fucking house with, like, luggage wow. and shit, <laughs> and she knew he was coming because he said it, so she had, like, family and friends, like, hunkered down in her house with her, like, fucking Michael Myers was coming. Oh, my God. And he eventually got arrested. But this guy was Good. so fucking crazy that he didn't even know that he was the stalker that she was talking about. <laughs> like, you gotta be... That's some movie shit, bro. Yeah, you gotta be fucking crazy. You need to be put away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fucked that's up. Crazy. Fucked up. Everybody's the hero in their own story. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That is really like a fucking movie plot. Yeah. So, yeah, I got a little bit of catching up to do on some shows this week, but... uh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised you've seen Where the Millers, Marvin. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's a pretty mainstream one. I guess it is, but it's fucking hilarious, and I'm glad you saw it because it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And uh, I'm hyped that there's a sequel coming. I hope it comes out. That'd yeah. be great. I hope. Oh my so, god. What? Have you not caught up on uh, the Mandalorian? Have you not seen episode seven? No, I'm like behind like two or, or maybe three episodes. I'm just wow. not really, like, into the season, honestly. And kind of how you said about Yellow Jackets, I kind of was like, eh, I don't know. Every time I go to watch it, I'm just like, I kind of just don't care. And then today I saw something that, like, Jack Black and fucking What's-Her-Name were in the last episode. and people are like, <laughs> Lizzo, I was yeah. going to say that, too. People are, like, freaking so out random. about it. I saw yeah. another thing. It's like, what are they doing? The Double Toasted guys that I like, they did, go, a, yeah. they did a video of, like, what is Star Wars doing? Like, why are they doing this? <laughs> Fans should be outraged. So I don't know what happened, but Fans should be it was akin to casting Bill Murray and Ant Man. It's kind of a, a similar style. 
pointless. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It wasn't terrible. It was for fun. It was probably the worst episode. I, no, it was. I don't know. Uh, seven, episode seven is really good though. They're, they're leading up to it's going to be a big cliffhanger, and then you, you're going to have to wait for Ahsoka. So. Yeah, that's the reason. Actually, I'm not into it. If I'm being honest, is because like I see what they we've and we talked about it last episode too. Like I see what they're doing with like they're, they're trying to do this like shared universe thing. Well, they're doing an, a little mini Infinity Saga, like. right? Right, and and mm. they're doing what they've done with Marvel, which, in my opinion, as I've been pretty vocal about. And I think you've agreed with me to a certain extent is what's ruining Marvel currently is the fact that like you have to just watch it all, otherwise you're fucking lost in the sauce. Like yeah. that's just yeah. not fair to any fan. And and you and I have the fortune we're fortunate enough to be able to devote enough time to like watch all the shit. But it's even a task for people like us because it's like, you know, you miss one thing. And then, you know, you start to fall behind and then eventually it becomes, at least for me, it gets to a point where you're just like, all right, well, fuck it. I just, I just can't keep it. And it's like, yeah, I don't, yeah. Know. I don't think it's a healthy way to it's, produce content. Yeah. It's definitely not. But shout out to YouTube recappers that will just mm -hmm. break the shit down for you so you don't even have to watch most of this shit. Shout out to people who break 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, you I know, love the, the titles of those. <laughs> like. I was thinking about it before, actually, too, about Marvel, because, um, you know, the uh, the the Marvels trailer came out this week. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys mm -hmm. watched it. I did not. And yeah. like, it looks OK. Posted it. it looks all right. You... Yeah. You know, you po uh, I think I posted it. It looks all right. It doesn't look that bad. You can't really glean much from it from the, the teaser. But like. Again, it's one of those things like if you didn't watch. As Dusty didn't. If you didn't watch Ms. Marvel, you're not going to know what the fuck is going on for this movie because mm. the setup is that at the end of Ms. Marvel, at the end of the series, that the first season, she randomly teleports and swaps places with Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers pops up in her room and you don't know where she ends up. And mm. this is how the movie starts off, apparently. It seems to be like her, Monica Rambeau, and, and uh, Ms. Marvel kind of just like popping back and forth between each other's like... Every time they place. use their power, they yeah. swap places. So. Right. Mm. So it's like... Seems to be the plot. Yeah. So, okay, so if you don't watch the fucking show, you're going to have no fucking idea what's going on. And it's like, I don't know, it's just, it's so stupid to me. But I was thinking about it before, and I was like, I wish when people interview people like Kevin, like, I'm sure when you interview, like, a Kevin Feige type of guy or any type of creator, like, there's a certain type of structure to the interview. You're told what not to oh, yeah. ask and talk about or whatever. But mm -hmm. I wish somebody would sit down with Kevin Feige and just be like, yo, bro, what was your plan for like the post <laughs> end game thing? And not in like a mean way, just like, yeah, how do you actually legitimately plan to follow this up? Because I got to right. tell you, buddy, Ms. Marvel and fucking she Hulk and like, it ain't it. It ain't how you're going to do it. <laughs> and, and obviously I'm sure a lot of this stuff was planned out like way in advance. And these were all like the fail safe, like, Hey, we don't have the X-Men or Fantastic Four characters yet, so we have no choice but to do these things. Right. I guarantee that's part of it. They were just already in in the making long before Endgame even mm -hmm. came out. But a part of me was like, you know, they don't have to keep the same pace that they were doing. Like, they could have taken a break after Endgame and been like, hey, guys, like, there's not going to be another Marvel thing for like two to three years. See you later. Yeah. And then come back, really plan that out. yeah. And yeah. then come back swinging. I don't know. I just wish, but I see the. I see. Long story short, I see them doing the same thing with Star Wars, and clearly, it's like a Disney thing. They obviously, it's a business, and they want to make as much money as humanly possible. But they do anyway, so it's like. Yeah, but this is also Dave Filoni's vision. No, that I know. He's had for you keep talking. Uh, I gotta get hand cream. Like a decade or better for when he was working on the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Uh, they ended all that, and now he gets to bring it to live action. And so this is a pet project of his. So mm -hmm. sure, it's Disney making money, but this is also um, Hands are like so him dry. getting to tell the rest of his story. No, I get it, and I trust him, and I trust John Favreau. It's just I don't know. It just seems weird that you have to watch multiple series because you said the same thing too. Like the cliffhanger of like Mandalorian, Mandalorian was in a different show. It's yeah. fucking well, stupid. Yeah, it was. It was all resolved in. <laughs> Yeah, Book of Boba Fett. And yeah. so at the beginning of Mandalorian Season 2, you don't know that unless you watched it. Right. And I think that's an that's issue. That's so terrible. Yeah, yep. it's stupid. 
So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the old Yellowstone universe is going to be like that pretty soon. Yeah, nah. they're, they're going to lose me for sure. I still haven't even watched 19 whatever the fuck, 23. 23. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't finished it either. And now there's all I'm like sure the it picks up, but McConaughey shit and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh yeah. How's this week been for news, Dusty? Tell us. Hit us with it. Um, not that huge, actually. Um, a lot of WB news, obviously. Uh, little to no Disney news. So we'll just go there first and get it over with. Good and bad. I saw Big something news today. I saw something WB related. I'll let you finish your stuff first. Okay. <laughs> but remind me to bring it good, up, Marvin. Good to the bad Disney yep. news. Uh, bad. start with the bad. Yeah, yeah. I can go for good. All minutes. right. Well, this is uh something that we all already saw. Uh, this is kind of Disney related, but it's not really a uh, talent manager. Entertainment 360 has dropped Jonathan majors uh, as well as PR firm, the lead company. Uh, they also parted ways with them. This is all allegedly, this is uh, from a report from deadline and they are claiming our source says, say, uh, this is what has happened. He's still with uh, being represented by, I think WME, um, no news from any of the companies or the studios. Uh, Loki 2 is already filmed. Um, he's got his other movie, Magazine Dreams, his bodybuilder movie, coming up at the in December. Is he but other than that, I think everything else is in pre-production. All of his projects are pre-production. Um, mm. it, it's hard to say. Um, is he in the second that... season of Loki? Y yes, absolutely. Okay. No, but like, a, is he like a main character or is he just like a cameo? Oh, I don't. I mean. I'm he, sure he's, he's in, in it. it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he's in it. I mean, he'll probably show up a couple times because he's the big yeah. baddie of this. And right. uh, I would imagine that Loki's going to play a big role in. This is actually is. really interesting, talking about Marvel. It is like sucks if he yeah. obviously is, you know, if he's being raked over the coals for his fame. We don't want to see that. But if he's being dropped from all his shit, it may have some legitimacy to it. As I said earlier. Yep. Hopefully it doesn't. But it'll be interesting to see what happens because I'm, just, I'm sure you're getting to it, but like, what is Marvel going to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't done anything yet, but well, it's messy. I don't think they've it's, shot. They definitely haven't shot oh, those just movies place, yet. Place no, they're home. all in pre-production. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. They don't, like the Kang Dynasty any, and all those. Yeah, Secret Invasion and uh, the Kang Dynasty. Secret Wars. Secret, yeah, secret wars. <laughs> you refer to the one as the I'm other gonna, every time. Yeah, mm -hmm. the and big, doing that. He's the also big got Marvel a guys. Like 48 hours in Vegas movie that's in pre production where he's, I guess, he's going to play Dennis Rodman. No, I don't care about that. <laughs> what were you saying, what? Marvin? Unless, uh, go ahead. He looks nothing like Dennis Rodman. What no, the fuck? Does. He's just <laughs> big and black. Yeah, and that's just it. Well, that big, just works. though, but Dennis Rodman wasn't big. Dennis Rodman was tall and skinny and black. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Funny Dennis Rodman story, little known fact, he broke his penis inside Carmen Electra. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> what? Yeah, he, ta uh, he talked about it on Howard Stern once. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. That sounds like something Dennis Rodman would do. I mean, listen, mm -hmm. you got a big fucking dick, nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> what were you going to say, Marvin? I'm sorry, we fucking... Um, big Marvel Jonathan news. Banks. Jonathan Majors. Marvel. Oh, I was going to say... The Marvel, the big Marvel guys are definitely in a room somewhere trying to weigh like the pros and cons of just letting him stay as king. Well, they're I, trying I think, to like figure out like is there going to be know that it's going to be that big of a deal for well, them? Yeah. Well, hang on. To be honest, hang on. I don't know. I Twitter, don't... Twitter would say otherwise. Twitter says <laughs> the end of the fucking world. Yeah. This cannot stand. Okay, they know everything. There's a few different things <laughs> to take into consideration here, right? Yep. They fired James Gunn because of pressure from the woke radical left. And clearly they didn't want to fire him. They did it because of pressure or whatever, because they hired him back. Okay. Mm, and that was I don't first. remember this happening. When yeah, was this? That's they, because a lot of people stepped up for him. Yes. They were like, you're insane. Yeah. They fired him because he made like a gay joke in a tweet like 20 years ago or something. Oh, like wow. Yeah. Okay. Tweets, tweets will get you canceled. <laughs> tweets will get you fucking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so hang on. So, um, 
That's factor number one. Like, do they want to go down that road again where they preemptively fire a person to just not be involved in like a, a media shitstorm? Yeah. Because again, be bad listen, look. I'm not one of the woke people who are like, you got to fire this fucking guy for what he said. Like, I, generally, I don't give a fuck. Obviously, if he's guilty of domestic abuse, like, yeah, sure, fucking fire yeah. the guy. But yep. I also, from a business perspective, would understand why, like, a company would be like, all right, get rid of him because we don't even want to deal with it. I get it. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would they want to go down that road again of firing somebody before all the dust is settled? That's the first thing. I don't think they would do that. What I was talking about is what do they do if, in fact, he is convicted and they have to fire him? Their whole plan for everything is shot to shit unless they would just recast him. Right. Right. Which they can do yeah. because there's variants in like the multiverse and all that stuff. I don't really think it's that big of a deal, but yeah, I don't know. Be interesting. I, I don't know. It seems that the story hasn't changed much. He, this is uh, pretty sure a love interest, if I remember correctly. They were having mm. a passionate disagreement, and it did get physical. I don't know that he started it. Um, she, right. I think he called the cops even, and they showed up, but he got taken to jail because of a bruise or something. Uh, she. Uh, said to the cops, I don't want him arrested. They had to. It's the law. She has written a yep. re recanting uh, everything. Um, and his lawyer has released text. I guess, you know, they hadn't read them all. I don't know. Apparently, they didn't paint him in the best light. There's also video that, it, I mean, if if you're in a, a passionate disagreement with somebody and there's video of it, it's not going to look good for you no matter what it is. Yeah. So oh, it's not going to look for him good for him publicly, but I, I don't I don't know that it's going to ruin him publicly because there's the real story and there's the story that the public's going to get, and if they can like mm. smooth it over a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, like it's hard. if she, if if she's saying I don't want to press charges, don't charge him. Uh, this was not his fault, and there's witnesses and everything. I I don't see how. Right. But maybe there's some behind the scenes stuff where like these guys, you know, Entertainment 360 and the lead company were like, no, we want we want to get away from this right now. Or maybe they know something we don't. But I I don't know. Yeah. We'll see how it turns out. But that's the latest development uh for him. Good luck to him. Um, um real quick, just to get Marvin up to speed, this is a very different scenario than the James Gunn thing. Mm -hmm. Because the James Gunn thing was initially started by Mike Cernovich. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's like, nope. he's like a wild right wing fanatic mm, who okay. was the main promoter of the pizza gate thing. Oh God. Okay. Got pizza it. pizza gate was the conspiracy theory that Democrats have an underground child sex ring yep. beneath a pizza shop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So Mike Cernovich was the one that uncovered these old James Gunn tweets and was saying that these tweets are like proof that he's a pedophile part of this pedophilia ring because James Gunn, mm. James Gunn at the time was posting on Twitter like pro democratic, pro de mm, pro democrat like stuff. So this was yeah. clearly like a right versus left type of thing. However, mm. his tweets were not appropriate, and I could totally <laughs> understand why Disney wouldn't want to be associated with this. Just to read a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, oh God! Yeah, I don't know if you should read them. I mean, listen, <laughs> it's not me saying it. He, there was a lot of like, there's a lot of questionable shit talking about like pedophilia like and and rape and stuff. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say uh, were they as heated as like the J.K. Rowling tweets that apparently? Eh, he well, no, she's different. She's like got her own problems, but he's made some questionable <laughs> things. So he he says, uh, "I like it when little boys touch me in my silly place." Shh. Um, <laughs> photo shoot with I don't know who these people are he added a couple people trying to maintain a semi chub so that I'll look impressive in these photos the hardy boys and the mystery of what it feels like when Uncle Bernie fists me hashtag sad children's books what the fuck <laughs> the expendables was oh, so manly geez. I fucked the shit out of the little pussy boy next to me the boys are back in town uh, so there's quite a few Think jokes about fucking children, which is, you know, questionable. A little questionable. I get it why Disney wouldn't want to be associated with it. So this is a little bit of a of a different scenario. But either way, people who are guilty of things should also be fired for things.
you know? Fuck it. Yes, for sure. Consequences. There's you don't want another Ezra Miller. Disney doesn't want an yeah. Ezra Miller Hell on no. their ranks. WB does. They don't that give a fuck. That would be a bad look. WB doesn't give a fuck. They own everything. Disney yeah. kind of owns everything. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, you know, people like to call it fucking, like, you know, cancel culture. I don't believe in cancel culture because nobody really gets canceled. Nobody who's been canceled has lost their fucking career. They've been mildly inconvenienced maybe for a little bit. But <laughs> it's more so just, like, you know, uh, accountability culture is what I would like to call it. Like, you said some fucked mm -hmm. up shit and, uh, you know, now you got to deal with the consequences well, of it. I think there's some, like... I don't think cancel culture necessarily exists for people who are wealthy, but uh, nah. there's people who, uh, okay. See, so you you're saying there's not people out there who no, I'm agreeing with stupid you. online and have been, then been mass reported and their company fired them. Like, no, I'm agreeing that, with you. You said, so, okay. Yeah, I'm saying somebody it, living paycheck to paycheck yeah, and yeah. gets fired from their job due to cancel culture yeah, yeah. is a little bit different. No, than, I'm saying wealthy people you know, are not victims of cancel culture. Yeah. They, they are not. Absolutely. Like Louis CK had to stop touring for two years. Like big fucking deal. Guy jerked off in front of him. Right. Woman. Uh, but give me a fucking break. Yeah. You know, Pee Wee Herman. Uh, yeah. It's just, I don't know. It's a stupid thing. Um, but yeah, sorry. You can continue with the All news. Right. <laughs> well, the good piece of news for Disney, uh, our boy Amos Burton mm. from The Expanse. Mm -hmm. Oh, I Remember saw this. Amos. Yeah. Uh, he's reportedly been cast to play uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn's right hand man in the uh, upcoming Ahsoka series. Oh, really? Uh, not clear who that's actually going to be. He did have an assassin with him in Rebels called Rook. Um, but I don't know if that'll be him or not. Uh, but yeah, what's Chatham? Okay, you guys? Obviously, Lars Mikkelsen still playing Thrawn because he voiced him. But. You guys remember when I hated Amos initially when I first started watching that show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how you could hate Amos, bro. I don't know. At the <laughs> beginning, he just seemed like arrogant and annoying, and then all of a sudden, he was just like, "Oh wait, no, this guy's a badass." Never he mind. was very <laughs> brooding early on, for sure. And you're like, yeah. "I don't know if I like this guy. Is he gonna?" flip or is he gonna be a, you know teddy bear talking about not finishing shows still never finished that oh. shit what yeah just happened it just froze for a second is for it us. back <laughs> it's back now oh. i didn't hear what you said we didn't hear what you said oh i was just saying <laughs> talking about not finishing shows i still haven't finished that show yeah. never watched the oh, last season right. you haven't mm. did you marvin that's right um i think i did i couldn't bring myself to do it because everybody said how bad it was Actually, I don't think I finished it because of how bad the first <laughs> couple episodes were. Oh, my God. I'll have to go back and watch it. Not, it's all right. It's like the budget was cut in the one-tenth or something. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had to spend it all on his other projects. Yeah. All right, let's shut this one down. He spent it all yeah. on fucking Lord Game of the Rings, Thrones, bro. Fuck Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Yep. Hey. Yeah, I said it. No, but hey, if... If if that sacrifice is what's going to lead to the uh, Dark Tower series, then I'm all for it. Mm. I'll take that. Again, another yeah. trade I'll we take. We still got the books. So yeah. fuck it. True. True, true. All right. Well, on to WB and your favorite part of WB News, Dan. <laughs> Zack uh, Snyder. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, Joe and Anthony Russo. I saw uh, that. You ever listen to their podcast? No. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, pizza film school they started i think during covid to talk about their favorite pizzas in the area and movies while they do it yeah oh nice um they revealed on instagram that uh, they sat down with Zack snyder for an extra special episode of pizza film school part one of the two part discussion drops tuesday april 18th uh make sure you've done your homework and watch the snyder cut before listening to these directors totally geek out and it's mm. going to be out on youtube on well the 18th. all right so I'm not going to wait till the end. My little piece of news was in relation to this. Apparently, one of the Russos was like asked if they would be interested in joining the James Gunn reboot of the DCU. And he, he was like, yeah, of course, absolutely. Like, so now everybody's like freaking the fuck out that the Russo mm. brothers might be involved. But like, why Let's wouldn't, go. why would they say no? They would like, nobody would be well, like, yeah, nah, no, no one's going to say no. Yeah, we've, we've talked about that before because I think uh, one of them, when he was, uh, oh no, that would be, you know, that was Marvel because they were, we were talking about uh, coming X -Men back. When I'm, yeah, coming back to do Marvel stuff because X Men. Yeah, we didn't, I guess. Which I would bet my life that they will be directing Secret Wars and, and the Kang Dynasty. My life. 
No, I would because like if they're gonna bring these guys back every so often. Have directors for this. I don't think so. Maybe they do. I don't know. They'll do something. They will be back. I thought uh, um, the rings. uh, That director was doing one of the uh, Avengers movies. Oh yeah, Destin Daniel Cretton. He's doing the Kang Dynasty. You right? (laughs) Yeah. So what else you got? Uh okay so oh since no we're WB... <laughs> yeah. no Wait, I, what? I just read the fucking guy who wrote Ant Man is writing the Kang Dynasty it's over for everything that's, bro Get... that's right I'm yeah. done I'm... Uh, they could they can they can uh, they can renege on that Let's canceling that the podcast it's over I don't ever want to talk about anything ever again <laughs> who wrote it what's his name Jeff Loveness he's one of the co-writers yeah. of fucking Rick and Morty, and he wrote Ant Man's <laughs> Quantum Mania, and he's the reason why Ant Quantum Mania was so fucking bad. And he's writing this fucking movie. Get out of here with this guy, bro. That's all he wrote. <laughs> I'm so upset. I just, I, I'm going home. Rick and Morty and Quantum Mania. Like, why would you then, hire this guy? That's a big placement for him. He's fucking eating. Yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta mean, have a fucking if talk. Your film's somewhat successful. They'll hang on to him because they, I mean. I, you know, you know the Marvel system. They don't like to give directors 100% creative control. So yeah. you know, they got to give their their writers and their directors. They got to get guys. That, yes, yes, man, is what they need. Secret Wars does mm-hmm. not currently have a uh, a director attached to it. However, uh, it does have a writer attached, Mr. Michael Waldron, who's known for Loki, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and mm-hmm. Rick and Morty. What like? <laughs> Who at Marvel was like, yo, we're doing a multiverse. Get the Rick and Morty guys in here. Stat. <laughs> like, give me a fucking yeah. break. Hey, there's a lot of multiverse stuff in Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why they fucking hired I mean, these guys. Clearly. Yeah, some ideas, yeah. <sighs> you guys are veterans in this, you know, multiverse <laughs> stuff. Let us know. Help us out. I'm done, bro. Help Over. us out. I'm done. Um, but yeah, HBO Max um, is officially rebranded as, simply as Max. Nice. They announced it. Uh, I think the Don't day like after it. we recorded the last Whoa. podcast. My phone's playing. Well, they, they dropped the HBO um, because it's it's more known for like its prestige adult programming, and so they might having HBO and there might be like, yeah, there's not going to be anything for my kids on this. Mm, I'm not do it. That's so true. They're just calling I... it Max, and they're that's rolling true. in Discovery Plus, so you're going to get all your. It's um, all about branding, Marvin. You're all reality yeah. TV stuff in there. Uh, it's launching May 23rd. Pricing nice. will remain unchanged. Uh, this is a, a culmination of the Discovery Communications and Warner Media merger um, that came out uh, April of last year. We've been talking about this since we started this podcast, or since we started doing the news, I guess. Right. Um, nice. They're doing this because they want to compete with Netflix and Disney Plus, you know, obviously. Um, sure. I think mm-hmm. they have like 96, 96 million global streaming subscribers from either HBO Max, HBO, or Discovery Plus at the end of last quarter. Um, and they want to they want to increase that, so they're going to roll everything into one. I think the Discovery Plus app is remaining unchanged, so you'll still get to get that by itself. Mm. And the HBO or the Max pricing remains unchanged as well, but they are going to add... A uh, five dollar foot long, extra, like nineteen ninety nine <laughs> for their premium premium package. Sorry. That's ad free, and you can stream like four four K concurrent things at the same time, or some shit. A wow. hundred, a hundred videos offline, lo- or some. I don't know. Yeah, the Netflix then new stuff's coming out. We'll it, maybe, so maybe it's a good call. They drop the HBO too. from the uh, from the name because when I think of HBO, I just think of like. Fucking softcore porn mostly, so maybe that's a good call. I mean, they are. It is, it is prestige <laughs> adult sex. programming, but I mean, we're talking about we're talking about the Sopranos, we're talking about the Wire, we're talking about Oz. Oh, kids need to watch you know. that shit, bro. Let me tell you something. <laughs> kids need to watch that. Shit. That's what I'm saying. When hey, I was a kids kid. on TikTok, seeing fucking titties, fucking nipples being flashed, and yeah. booties fucking everywhere, yeah. like. TikTok is out of control, bro. When I was a kid, I used to watch... HBO was no problem compared to TikTok. Trust me. I can't even log on... I can't even log on fucking TikTok. It's just fucking... (laughs) Have you seen the live streams? The algorithm is all fucked up. Have you seen the live streams on TikTok? 
<laughs> I've seen. I haven't actually seen it's, them, it's, but I've scrolled past them. It's always chicks with like their nipples hanging on for dear life, <laughs> like not trying to come out of their shirts and shit. <laughs> And like we thought Twitch was bad. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. TikTok hey, that's fine. Live listen, is listen. Fucking nuts. When I was a kid, I was up late watching well, fucking real fish. sex. I was real learning about sex. I was. I was watching I was yeah. learning about fucking uh uh Dominic. Pimps and Hoes and after dark. Pimps you and watch the Pimps and Hoes documentaries and all those? I used to watch fucking G String Divas. <laughs> I used to watch fucking uh what was the other one? Uh Taxi Cab <laughs> Confessions. Remember that Ooh, show? That was yeah, a good one. Yeah, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Damn. <clears throat> just to jerk myself into a slumber <laughs> little old me mm-hmm. oh my god bro yeah. i remember yeah. watching comedy central oh yeah and then gets late gets later next thing you know is fucking girls going wild girls yeah. going wild for like six hours straight real girls going wild <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hashtag Amazing great. American American television is yeah, so yep, good. Yep, yep, yep. The Man Show. <laughs> I remember the Man Show. Dang. Yeah, by today's standards, that show is like so bad though, in so many ways. One of my favorite cheesy shows was uh, "A Thousand Ways to Die." I fucking love that show. I don't remember that. You don't remember "A Thousand Ways to Die"? Oh, it my sounds God. familiar, but I don't remember what it was. It was so good. It was so good. So much entertainment from that. Mm. So what else we got, well, Dusty? Um, during the event where they announced Ooh. the rollout of the new application and pricing and entertainment, they also released a fuck ton of trailers. I posted Ooh. some of them, I think. Uh, you did. We got Fool's Paradise, the Charlie Day, Ken Jeong, and Jason Sudeikis movie. Um, I don't know. Did you guys watch it? What do you think? Looked yeah, interesting I'm interested in that. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's the one I was like, where it was like corny. Like, I don't know if this is gonna be funny or yeah. like just fucking cheesy. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Jason Sudeikis, I didn't know was in it, but he is. Yeah, I don't oh, remember seeing nice. him in the trailer. I don't either. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Seems funny. It's about, about it. a fucking guy who's like clearly got medical yeah. issues who just becomes a silent film sensation. <laughs> Found a doppelganger. Yeah, yeah. And just swapped out. Yeah. Um, Continental the looks good, trailer. but that was from yeah. So oh, the ping, yeah, the, the ping trailer was amazing. I can't wait, bro. Yeah. Um, Every time I see stuff from that, I'm just hyped. Yep, I think I think that comes out before Batman Two. I want to say I'm sure it does. It's probably going to set up, up the world. The Batman Two. Yeah, the Batman um, Two. We actually got <laughs> True Detective Night Country trailer for that. that yeah, I'm good. pretty I'm pretty hyped for that. Um, oh, I haven't seen much True Detective, I think. Yeah, you're fuck up, oh, Marvin. Let me tell you yeah. something. <laughs> I've been trying to tell you, True Detective, the first season... He says season of, one, and there's another one. Season three. The first three. season will change your life. Yeah, season, really? one, season one is one of the best mm-hmm. seasons of television I have ever watched. It is Damn. up there with Breaking Bad. It is up there with The Wire. It is up there with The Sopranos. If not better than all of them, if I'm being honest. But just that single That season. single season. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing okay. story. It's it's a fucking drama. It's a mystery. It's kind of scary at times. Yeah. Fucking Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson fucking crush it. It is so fucking good. Season <laughs> two was dog shit because HBO rushed it out after the success of the first one. They didn't give the writer Nick Pizzolatto enough real time to, to create a second season. Yeah. Proper. And the second season was kind of dog shit. So you could skip the second Oof. season. And then the, okay. th- and the third season has Mahershala Ali in it. Ooh, and is fan. And is also very, very good. The third season, while the show is an anthology series, none of, the se- mm-hmm. none of the seasons really have anything to do with one another. Oh, that's good. The third season is loosely connected to the first season. Good. So they just said, fuck the second season. We're done with that trash. Basically. I like that. And now the third More season. More people should do that. Abandon. Abandoned the ship when it's fucking yeah. sinking. Yeah. And now the third season looks really good, though I don't think it's written by Nick Pizzolatto again. I think somebody else is writing it. I'm almost positive. But looks good. Hmm. Okay. I'm interested. Right. It's got, uh, yeah, it looks good. We got the John Wick spinoff trailer, The Continental. I didn't watch that. Uh, takes place uh, early in New York. Um, I'm not sure of the exact timeline. But nah, looks we'll see. I don't know. 
I don't know. I, maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Yeah. I also got the the sympathizer. It says three part event too for that one. So yeah, yeah. The, a couple of these are like uh, mini series. Yeah. Like the sympathizer is also a mini series. This is oh, uh, is it okay? Park Park Chan Wook. Uh, he did um, Old Boy. And he directed that one, and he's written written a bunch of the really original movies. Old Boy or the new the old original. Boy? Yes. Yeah. He oh directed wow. The original. Both of which are not that great, but yeah, good. You know, wow! Like the original? I thought the original I like, was great. I like the remake. It's okay. And yeah, the remake it. was good. It wasn't as good as the original, though. The original better the original. than the remake. Although, actually, no, the remake gets a little bit of a bump up because Elizabeth Olsen's naked in that movie. <laughs> yeah. I said it. Um, I said it. <laughs> yeah, RD, RDJ is also in on this project. This is uh, about a half French, half Vietnamese man who served as a spy for communist forces during the vietnam war yeah i That's watched that trailer i kind of didn't give oh, a shit. shit i have a real problem with period pieces as we've discussed i, I just like it has to right. really grip me i've also seen a lot of people fucking talking about this what's that war movie that's out right now uh well it's a lot of, i don't fucking keep up with the war movies not yeah, gonna lie so yeah i movies. can't think of the Sorry. name of it recent recent one yeah to keep up. um the covenant Yes, The Covenant. Everybody's like, this is the greatest war movie I've ever seen. Guy Ritchie. Yeah. And I kind of just like, I'm like, I'm so over Wait, war movies. Is that out yet? <laughs> that's, that's not out yet, is it? No, but early release, early, early screenings oh, of it, pe people are saying it's like fucking insane. Mm, let's check sure. the Rotten Tomatoes on that one. Hey, Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. We already, It's Guy Ritchie. I mean, like, you know, we already know Marvin hates Guy Ritchie. So... Mm -hmm. It's weird that he has two movies coming out Guy. in the same year. That's weird. Although I don't hate Guy Ritchie. <laughs> I've seen like one of his thing. Well, one quarter of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, we gotta go make him watch like Snatch or Lockstock. The man from Uncle's fucking really good. Uh, all his movies are good. Really, I've honestly. never seen any of the movies he's made. Apparently, Besides. the gentleman was good. Mm-hmm. His movies are all the same. It's always about like these ragtag group of guys like doing some sort of like scam or some shit. Well, the newest one <laughs> felt more like a uh, jab at those types of movies mm. than an actual. Like, if you're gonna watch like any guy Ritchie he's flirting movie, with making it a you know a pun of itself, right? If you're gonna watch any guy Ritchie movie, it's got to be Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels or Snatch. Both of those are very good. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Those are both tremendous. I think I have at least one of those on my list for Marvin. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah. Uh it also looks like we we got a we got a Harry Potter teaser. It didn't really show much. Although oh, it that. does <laughs> seem as though I saw we'll really be keeping funny. John Williams score. So the, the, the Taylor Tracer used it. So well the music is gonna stay the same in this ten year fucking reboot. I saw a really funny TikTok that I got fooled by at first. Some TikToks do like it's no video, it's just like a carousel of pictures. Yeah. And it was like, oh, the cast was announced for the new Harry Potter. And it was like Elliot Page playing Harry Potter. And oh I was like, God. I was like, oh, I can actually like kind of see that. And then as you scroll through the pictures, it just gets more and more ridiculous. And it's it's <laughs> the TikTok, the, po the person who made the post was making a joke that they're going woke. And it's like uh, Hermione's like a black chick. And this, that, the other. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that would be hilarious. Hermione was a black chick, though, in the, in the play that mud I... Blood. Oh, mud blood would be like a racial slur then. It, well, it is a racial That'd slur. In the, in the no, story, but I mean, it would be it? like a double racial slur. Yeah, it has a double meaning. <laughs> <laughs> the M word. <laughs> uh... Yeah, no, uh, a black chick played Hermione in the play. But I think, wasn't she written that way too, I thought? Or no? Did I make that Hermione? up? Hermione? Yeah, in the books. Isn't she supposed to be? Oh, I actually don't know. I don't know. I'd have to double check. That's a knowing question. Yeah, I'd have to double check. Anywho, mm -hmm. that was funny. So, yeah, it looks like they're keeping the music. Uh, who knows? Nobody. They, they actually asked Elijah about the reboot. Uh, he seemed diplomatic in his response he's like yeah it's crazy i don't know you know the last movie came out 12 years ago but the first movie came out like 20 fucking years ago <laughs> yeah and that's about usually when they reboot something so right you know it, and the doing it by, by seasons you know it'll be allow them to tell more of the story from the books some characters were cut out i guess but yeah 
You know what's going to suck? Having to watch child actors, like, as an adult <laughs> play Harry Potter. It was yeah. different when, when I was younger. Yeah, it's going to be that. weird. They need to, I don't know, like, you, they're going to have to cast adults because if you cast children, like, when they, they this is a 10-year deal, <laughs> you want to, you know, 20 to 30, your, your appearance doesn't change much, but, like, you know, 16 yeah. or 15 or once you go through puberty like you change a lot like what we saw in <laughs> yellowstone kids shot up fucking six inches and between really one like season like, from another <laughs> yeah. I, was like, yeah. I was like who the fuck who is, is this, this guy <laughs> that's true so uh yeah they may do adult actors who knows but this is like i said 10 year deal we'll see how it comes out um yeah we actually finally got gremlins Secrets oh. of the Mogwai trailer. Oh, uh, this is an animated prequel that follows uh, what's his name? Sam, I think, was the shopkeeper. Was a, the kid, a grandson. Yeah, the kid. And it's oh. how he meets. It's how he meets Gizmo. Now, this is definitely kid orientated. Uh, the animation. Oh, the this fucking animation it's, art style mm, is so yep. bad. <laughs> yep, Gizmo is pretty cute in this. Uh-huh. I may watch a couple episodes, but this is definitely a four kids kind of show. But yes. it's a Gremlins prequel, so we haven't had Dude. a Gremlins movie since what ninety? Gremlins two. This is a series. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't look that bad. Ten episodes. Dude, no, this looks terrible. Coming out May twenty third. Uh, they actually started development on this back in twenty nineteen. I don't know. They, there's a lot of delays and issues and stuff. Probably COVID again. Thank you, COVID. Probably. I hate um, this, like, fucking, I don't even know what to call it, but it's, like, s- super kitty. like, uh, this, I, I don't know if I could watch this one. Yeah, Marvin's flipping out. He's disappointed. This art style is unwatchable. <laughs> <laughs> Some Dexter's Lab vibes, except it's just a little more <laughs> cheesy. I don't know. Did you guys, <laughs> um, uh, speaking of trailers, did you guys see the... Uh, well, I don't think they've released a trailer for it yet, but there's been information released to the new Martin Scorsese movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I mentioned the movie, <coughs> but I uh, haven't really done a deep dive into it. Got a sick cast. Leo, Robert yeah. De Niro, Jesse Plemons, Brendan Fraser. Damn, Leo yeah. and Brendan oh, yeah, Fraser this, in the yeah. same we, fucking movie room? We, mm-hmm. Well, we, we, we talked about it, and you were like, yeah, imagine Scorsese working with Yeah, I may have made the joke. <laughs> yeah. De Niro. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesse Plemons. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, that's yeah. your boy. Yeah, it should be a really good movie. We'll see. That's the guy. That's him. Oh, my God. Todd. It's fucking Todd, bro. <laughs> Um, I got a juicy one for you now, Dan. Oh boy. Our boy Vincent D'Onofrio Sounds retweeted familiar. a CBR op ed arguing in favor of him crossing over to DC to play Alec Holland. Mm-hmm. So he retweeted the tweet. Two days later, or oh, he had to love this to the tweet. Two days later, uh, he also tweeted, oh, Damn, okay. now I can't get Alec Holland off my mind. So it sounds like he may be speaking this into existence, but Vincent could cross over and play Swamp Thing for James Mangold. I don't know that I would like him as Swamp Thing. Why don't they just get? Well, you're not really going to see him. Well, I know. After you get, (laughs) it's going to be boss and shit. I feel like they should just get the same guy, Andy Bean, who did it in the show. I still got to watch the show, man. I I mean, this is this is all just you know. A CBR writer made the article. Vincent yeah. saw it, liked it, tweeted it out, and said, "I can't can actually now that I think about it, this would be amazing." Obviously, James Gunn hasn't cast anybody, and it's a long ways away. But mm. I was surprised. I thought you'd be happy to see uh, him in a a more dark fucking. I mean, I like him, and I think the way he I played mean, was, King King was, was pretty fucking dark. Dark for Pin King, yeah, it was pretty dark actually. Pin King. <laughs> <laughs> Pin King. Yep. Good old Pin King. Um, yeah. Um, no, so anyways, cool. that's it for WB. Uh, we do have some et cetera news. Oh. Uh, the biggest second weekend ever oh. for an animated movie. Mario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. It was so uh, good. Expected have you seen it to surpass nope. $700 million worldwide as we're recording today, April 7th. 
2019. You went to see it, so, Marvin? Uh, yeah. This yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of those, yeah. This is great. This is great. Great. Too. Was it actually good, though? Um, or is it just... No, nah, it was yeah. actually good. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, listen. I think you'll actually like it. I'll watch it. This is... Uh, it's, I actually uh, love the so start. So this is the and, highest grossing video game adoption of all time now. Adaptation. Yeah. And I hate <laughs> the fact that you could make the monetary uh, value of it and then make that equal the quality of it. I, I'm not saying it's bad. Mm. Good. I, I mean, I'm, I probably like it. I just wasn't thrilled I, with the. I was one of those guys who was like, ah, I don't really see the voices. I'm not a lot equating of Easter any eggs, of them. Man. I'm simply reporting the news. No, I know, I know. A lot of Easter eggs. I don't. You infer. <laughs> You know, actually, I saw some uproar Fucking about uh, they replaced during the, no spoilers, mm-hmm. during one of the scenes, they replaced um, like a custom made song for no, the AHA song. There's music in it? Yes. Ugh. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? I hate movies with... Mm, singing and shit. No, it's not it's, singing. It's just a song that's playing oh, okay, while okay. you know everything else is happening. But there was a custom-made N- Nintendo song, mm-hmm. and the fans were upset that they replaced it for okay. "Take on Me" instead. Which, during that scene, I kind of understand "Take on Me" wasn't really like fitting that scene, but fans are fans are weird. They get a little too upset about things. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I uh have a movie we have to add to the list I think we gotta add it to our schedule recently found out about this movie little under the radar horror movie that's been making the rounds people talking about it called talk to me came out last year talk to me it's got a 7.4 boys mm. oh shit yeah. A24 oh yeah and you know A24 of course. Don't fuck around who's in this don't know don't know <laughs> Don't know anybody. Sophia Wilde? Oh, so just straight up everyone's unknown? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Mario's doing yeah. good. Mario. Mm-hmm. It's not Mario. Um, <laughs> it's I didn't say Mario once. <laughs> yeah. Should easily cruise to a billion. It'll be the first movie since Avatar Way of Water to hit a billion. It'll probably smash that. It's not doing that great in China. Apparently, it's doing really well in Mexico. Obviously, China. in the U.S. and Canada, it's doing great. Um, n- it just came out, so there's no talk of a sequel or anything yet. I think all, everybody's on board for it, though. Apparently, even Jack Black pitched an idea of Pedro Pascal coming over to play Wario for the sequel. <laughs> oh, shit. Jack Black? Yeah, he's he's plays Bowser. He yeah, does I know. A little bit of sing. So why would they bring him back to play another character? Or are you saying fans want that? No, Jack Black pitched the idea to bring Pedro Pascal. Oh, in oh, oh! Mario. I misheard you. I misheard you. <laughs> I also have a piece of news. You continue though. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to step no, on your toes. Have you seen the trailer no. for the Power Rangers thing coming to Netflix? No. Uh, Actually fucking hyped about this. It's the original cast. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're all like 90 years old. I've heard about it. I haven't seen the... Uh... <laughs> it's called Power Rangers Once and Always. Ooh. I, I don't know if it's all... It's a lot of the original... You're going to cry Oh yeah. on this one for uh, bro, sure. Bro, I used to watch the shit ever come home from school, but Tommy's dead. He died last year or whatever. I think Jason's uh-huh. like a crazy guy or something. But it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. This looks good. I'm hyped. Sorry, you continue. Mm-hmm. David Yosta, the guy who played Billy, the Blue Ranger, he looks like he's fucking 70 years old now. It's hilarious. <laughs> nice. I was never really a big Power Ranger. Fan. It was probably... He does look old as fuck. Yeah, you were probably a little bit older by when Power Rangers yeah. was popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen, I'd seen episodes because it was on, but I didn't like, I wouldn't, like sit down and tune in and be like, oh my gosh, I gotta watch this. Yeah, I used to come That's home from school and I used to sit my ass down and watch Power Rangers instantly. <laughs> that was my shit. I wasn't shit. that big on Power Rangers either, actually. Whatever, guys. You guys are fucking. Lame. I think I was watching like Jimmy Neutron and shit like that. <laughs> Ed, around, Ed and Eddie? Around that time, maybe. I don't know. Were you an Ed, Ed and Eddie guy, Martin? No, when was Power Rangers? 90s? Mid 90s, yeah. Oh, no. That's way before. Yeah, you were like. I was fucking 
I don't know, breastfeeding or some shit. I was still. <laughs> uh, damn, you were a breastfed kid? Nah, I wasn't. One of those? <laughs> One of those. <laughs> All right, what else we got, Dusty? Uh, we got one more piece of news. It is another trailer. Have you guys seen it yet? Uh, the Boogeyman. Yes. Nope. Uh, yeah, I think one of you guys posted that, or did I post it? I don't remember. I think you posted it. This is the terrible. latest Stephen King you said it was terrible. Yeah, it looks bad. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. It's coming out on June 2nd. This was actually developed for Hulu to release straight to digital, but pre-screenings rated it high enough that they moved it to a theatrical release. So now mm. it's coming out in theater. So they think it has some promise behind it. This is obviously based on uh, one of his short stories that he wrote for Cavalier magazine yep. back in the seventies. Um, it looks like from the trailer that they've changed the story a little bit because the short story is the dad sitting in a psychiatrist office telling the psychiatrist what, what transpired with his daughters. Yeah. And mm. it seems this was written when, in the Coke years. Yeah, and in the trailer, it looks like the daughters are experiencing everything. What are the coke? The Wait, what is the too busy fucking psychiatrist? What are the coke years? Oh, he had a crippling cocaine addiction. Well, I wouldn't say crippling. Crippling. He, he was, was writing a, books. That yeah, ain't crippling. He was a that's coke fucking. Addict. That's flourishing. He used to sit in the like fucking cabin by himself and just do coke and fucking. Yeah, the boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> clown, uh, they're all going to fuck Beverly and, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a really controversial part of the it book. Well, I told you to read it, so I can't really spoil it for you. But... Oh, you almost fucking ruined me. <laughs> You're not going to read it. <laughs> I but... am going to read it. I'm a fucking big reader. All right. Read it tomorrow. It's right part now. of my bio. Don't fucking question my bio. All right. Read it right now. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Go read it. I'll wait. All right. Go ahead, Dusty. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know. All right. Yeah. No. Nah. That's the news. I mean, it might be good. I don't know. The trailer didn't make it look that great. Uh, and then I'm reminded of Firestarter that came out like a year ago or whatever it came out. That was just like dog shit. Well, there's also the trope, of, you know, single parent has kid or kids, and something's some sort of demon is terrorizing them. Yeah, but also Stephen King movies are like hilariously uh poorly done, like historically. So I don't know. We'll see. It's not, I'd I'd watch it. Sophie Thatcher's in it. She's the chick from uh Yellow Jackets. Yeah. She plays the younger version of uh Christina Ricci's character. Hmm. And she's good in that show. Apparently well, she was in the book of Boba Fett too. Oh yeah, she was the I one of those yeah. kids. Yeah, no, I'd give it a go. I'd give it a go. Yeah. All I right. Watch just about any horror movie, I feel like. Yeah. No, horror is one of those things, you know? I mean, it's like, even when it's not good, it could be good. Um, yeah. Unless, of course, it's the movie we're here to talk about today, folks. And that is uh, <laughs> The Hole in the Ground. Let's get into that <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah. This is a great movie to reaffirm why I don't want kids. Uh, a, they're oh, yeah. they're a fucking pain in the ass, and B, yep. if they start being weird and like scary shit starts happening, I just uh, put them up for adoption right away. Like that's right. I'm and not that, having no creepy kid in my house. Yeah, and then the adoption's like a whole big deal, fucking hassle. <laughs> you ain't gonna have me fucking chasing your dumb ass into the woods at night where it's fucking dark and scary and Hell seeing no. all with a fucking like you know really bad flashlight. And then yep. you're going to just gaslight my ass and be like, oh, what, mommy? I was here the mommy. whole time. Uh, <laughs> you notice that these Flashlight movies Flashlight like, tropes irritate me the most in movies. I bet. <laughs> what were you saying, Marvin? Scene. You notice that these movies would possess kids and never have a black mama? Yeah, nah, because she would slap the shit out of that slap kid. Slap the fucking demon out that motherfucker, <laughs> yeah. yep. Now, bitch, what you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Rightfully so. I don't know. But, yeah, so we're talking about Hole in the Ground. This is a movie that I was excited to watch. I had it on my list for a little bit, a little while. I don't remember how I found out about it, but I've... It's Evil been, Dead? It's the no, same guy? Yeah, well, no, I knew about the movie before I knew it was the oh. same guy. It oh, was just, okay. Like, I had, I, I don't know where I, like, heard, heard about it. Um, every now and then, like, I just said about that other movie. Um, I forget, I already forget what it's called, but... 
every now and then I'll like come across like these like sleeper horror movies that I want to check out. So it's been on my list. Then I found out it was directed and written by Lee Cronin, who is also doing the upcoming uh, Evil Dead Rise. Comes out this Friday, and I'm extremely excited Can't about wait. it. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to watch this, and we thought it'd be a good idea to maybe watch it now. Prepare ourselves, see what we're in for with that guy. Get a, get a feel for this, his style. Yeah, it makes me super more even more excited because I feel like if he wasn't the person directing this movie, it would have been a fucking terrible movie. I feel like it was kind of terrible even with him directing it. If I'm being <laughs> honest, but we'll. Uh, so this is about uh, a single mother living in the Irish countryside with her son begins to suspect he may not be her son at all and fears his increasingly disturbing behavior is linked to a mysterious sinkhole in the forest behind their house. Thus the title, the hole in the ground. And my yep. God, is it a big hole now? It is. I got a couple of dusty complaints about this movie. Oh and, God, that's and, not good. And one of them is for sure. Don't live near a giant fucking sinkhole. For many reasons. Don't move to a fucking random ass house. Right. In yeah. the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> and that has fucking spiders in it, just galore, <laughs> apparently. Somebody's crackling. Who's crackling? I don't know. It's you. Is it me? Yeah, your phone must you must have been getting a text or something. Oh. That Android shit. <laughs> Fucking up. It's not shit. Android shit. It's fucking technology <laughs> no, shit. No, it's because you got to get regular text messages like a weirdo. Oh, regular. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, all right. I don't think this was a bad movie, but it also wasn't a good movie. Let's just come right out and say it. It wasn't good. No. I think it could have been terrible. I'm telling you, Lee, he put some magic on it. It could have been what he, he did. It. No, it could have been way worse. And that's, you know, I'm. Shouts out to Lee. I don't know if it was his doing. I'd imagine so because he was the director. But it's 50-50 because the movie wasn't really written very well. And mm -hmm. and and it's not really... Uh, this was his first movie. This is his directorial debut, right? So uh, he's done a couple of shorts. Um, Evil Dead Rises is going to be his second film. Now, listen. That movie's being produ executive produced by fucking... Uh, uh, Sam. Sam Raimi and Ash himself, okay, yes. right, yeah, Bruce whom, Campbell. yeah, Bruce Campbell, whom hold that franchise very close to their hearts for obvious reasons. Yep. I don't think they'd go out and get a director unless they thought that, like, wow, this person could really contribute something to the franchise. For sure, okay, I think that's true. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, some of the good things about this movie, I, I think that um. Like it had like little bits and pieces of good stuff. Like the cinematography, I thought was really good. I like the oh, way it was, was great. It was a, yeah. yeah, the way it yeah. was shot was really good. It was very moody and atmospheric. Um, yeah, they definitely set the tone. Mm hmm. For sure. Uh, the music was really great in this movie. Very like. Oh yeah, it was. It had like a very haunting score to it. Mm hmm. Uh, like when she's running back from the woods. <laughs> there, yeah, there's a lot that of stuff. Even just little creepy. moments in the house, like just little tones and things and just yep. like piano music. I always find piano music very creepy. Thanks in part to <laughs> it. One of the reasons why. Right. Um, but yeah, I, beyond that, I don't really think there was much. This movie didn't have much going for it beyond those two things, I don't think. No. Nah. Uh, it was, it was, yeah. you know, I thought it was pretty good up until... When she goes into the fucking hole. Yeah, well, that's like the end that of the was movie. The, yeah, well. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess we have, I don't know, we have different The end of the movie there. is a big part of the movie for me, though. It is. So, like, when you ruin the ending or, like, when you do some weird shit, it's like... Well, this is... horror movies notoriously have bad endings, generally. <laughs> that's fair, yeah. Very few times are horror movies able to stick the landing that they've yeah. built up throughout the course of the film. Yeah. Matter of fact, you hated the ending of uh, Barbarian, right? Mm, yeah. And you weren't you weren't here for the review of it. I liked the ending of it because of the silliness of it. Yeah. Because the way horror movies generally end, like, <laughs> there's no real good way to end a horror movie. You know, you have right. You have the way that they do it. You know, that geniuses do it, like John Carpenter ended Halloween, where it's just like, up, oh, he's gone. Bye. Have fun, everybody. Or, yeah. you know, Black Christmas, same thing, like ambiguous True. ending. Right. Or you try to explain some shit 
that just completely topples the house of cards that you <laughs> built throughout the film, which is why I like the barbarian ending because it was just kind of like fun and ridiculous. It was just like, sure. Yeah. It was, just, you know, so, um, but yeah, I don't know this, well, this movie fucked up and tried to like slightly explain it and then yeah. do like the John Carpenter thing. And it was just so yeah. fucking dumb. It tried to explain something that really didn't as far as I'm aware, it didn't really need any explanation. No, because who fuck, yeah. It's a it, fucking, but I, no, but not for the reason that you're saying, I don't think. I don't think what? it's just pretty fucking evident what was going on this whole time. Yeah. He was like, fucking possessed by something. Yeah. This movie, like, <laughs> doesn't build, matter what. <laughs> this movie's built as a drama horror mystery. Now, there was no drama in the movie. They, they really tried to, like, make you kind of, like, feel for her with, like, whatever happened with the kid's father and, like, she's me. I, yeah. I know daddy makes you sad, mommy. And like, but they never really explored that. So there was no real drama and there was no horror in the movie. It wasn't scary at nah, all. Nah, It was like more definitely like a psychological thriller or something. 100% it, it was psychological. Well, it tried to be. Yeah. It tried I was going to be. say, I'm very careful yeah. because. Because, yeah. And then this was uh, Shauna, Shauna Kerslake. This was on her too. Because you're, you're in the mind of a mother who witnessed some shit and is seeing some shit, is not questioning yeah. things. And instead of like really seeing her dive into the insanity, it really the movie just kind of keeps trying them along. You're like, oh, okay, well, what's well, there's no insanity. Next? That I was thinking yeah, that the whole time. I was yeah. thinking the same. I have exactly the same opinion because like they're they're doing the things that would like like she's she's questioning like, oh, my son's being super fucking weird, but the movie itself doesn't make the audience question it. So it doesn't work as a psychological horror, drama, anything, because the audience isn't feeling what the character's feeling. Yeah, She's right. confused and questioning things, but we're the whole time just like, oh, no, he's like totally fucking possessed by something. <laughs> For sure, yeah. And it's like up until the point where he has super strength, I'm like, dude, just slap this little kid or something. Like, let's, <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah, call him out. Call him out something. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, okay, well. Here yeah, we are. he's he's got super strength. Yeah. Uh, th and then they do another little. There's a little. There's a little nuance that I was noticing throughout the whole movie. And I wanted to make sure that I wanted to ask you guys if you noticed it. Now I'm not saying I noticed it because I'm like a fucking super genius or anything, but it starts out very like minor and then builds up as the plot makes you aware that he's like clearly possessed. It's his breathing. Oh yeah, it gets fucking yeah. But it, but it happens early on too. He's like he's got this really like <laughs> mouth breather from Hey Arnold type of breathing going on. Yeah. But yeah. it gets more extreme as the movie goes. It becomes like almost like a like a like a snarl or a growl mm -hmm. of like an animal or a creature. I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys had noticed that. And again, that was like an I, interesting part of the sound design too. Yeah, I didn't notice the build up. I I kind of noticed it at the end, I guess, when <clears throat> yeah. it was like pretty apparent. Yeah, yeah, like a fucking monster's growling underneath his breathing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, throughout the movie, folks, like this is this mother. She's just her kids being fucking weird after going into the woods one day by himself. Comes back, he's not being himself. Like, uh, duh. Like, what happened to him? Clearly, <laughs> something fucking happened. And uh, <laughs> but like, nothing scary really happens in the movie. There's like some like minor creepy moments, but really they're not that big of a deal. And yeah, then that's true, they try and do a couple jump scares, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And then there was the introduction of two other characters in the movie. Some fucking weird old lady and her husband. And and they're like, you know, they're like the uh the ex uh exposition characters who are like right. our son. My, my wife thought our son was different and da 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 and he disappeared and missing tooth and blah 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 blah. And let me just tell you something. If fucking some creepy ass fucking woman is just belligerently shouting, that's not your boy, while smashing her head into my window, bro, I'm probably going to believe her. Yeah. Please. Dropping the kid yeah. off at the police station the next day. And if you're day. the fucking terrible, why do you, every horror movie has a terrible husband? Yeah. Who doesn't yeah. believe? She nailed that part, by the way. Yeah. And now <laughs> James Cosmo. Yeah. 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 But, but even their introduction, aside from the exposition, made like literally no sense to be in the movie. You know, there's that one scene where she shows back up to, like, ask the woman questions. Like, hey, why'd you say that about my kid? And she's just, like, dead with her head buried in the dirt. <laughs> and then they brought that back around later where the kid tried to bury that, yeah. our main character's head in the dirt. But, like, 
There was never an explanation as to why. No explanation at all made like, no sense. What is there? What is it? A fucking plant? You trying to make it into a plant? A tree? Yeah. Like what's just the head trying burying to thing? Keep them from talking. <laughs> I guess. So I, yeah, just shove their face in the ground. They can't talk anymore. Like because <laughs> so, they, it's he killed. It was the people that were saying that you're not, you're not a, you know, you're not who you are. Because mm. the old lady said it, and then she, you know, she. Yeah. Sure. And the mom figured out she's like, You're not my son, and he tried to do the same thing to her. Yeah. All right. Um I feel like it would have been more interesting <laughs> if more people give me were a like dirt nap. If more people were like uh uh like doppelgangers in in the town or something like Yeah, I don't it know. It could have made it more interesting or something. I don't know. Well, that's the thing yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, it. that's one of the things, yeah. Like the paranoia. Like if if this really happened to you. Who do you trust? Like and somebody, like somebody told you that's <laughs> not your kid, and you start seeing things that make you think that's not your kid, you're not just gonna think this is my kid. You're gonna think, well, who the fuck else isn't who they're <laughs> yeah. supposed to be? Like, right. what the fuck is going on here? Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's plenty of other movies like you that. You don't get that paranoia in this though. I don't no, know. there's no paranoia because again, no. It's very clear. Because you know who the culprit is, and there's only one of them. And you know it instantly. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't, like, you know, sm there are, when I've talked about this before, there are smart horror movies that take the tropes of the genre and either flip them on their head completely or tweak them in different ways to throw the audience off and subvert the audience expectations. Didn't really, mm -hmm. this didn't really do any of that. It's like, from the second the movie starts, you're like, oh, kid's going to be weird. Like, yeah. he's on the cover eating a he fucking already... spider. For Christ's sakes. Like, there's no yeah. surprises or anything like that. <laughs> so when shit starts to happen, you're just like, oh, all right, that makes sense. And uh, I guess, like, he's fucking possessed or whatever the fuck the case is. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, we're on it. Like, uh, <laughs> usually horror movies, the way they go, like, the audience is on a ride, like, with the characters. This didn't feel like that. It felt like I was just, like, I just felt like I was watching it. I didn't, I wasn't experiencing it, if that makes nah. any sense, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I feel like this is a movie where there could have been more of the... yeah backstory and maybe i guess like world building type of thing because like there was some stuff throughout the movie where there were like covered mirrors and mm -hmm. this sort of weird thing but like and then she just knows to <laughs> put the mirror in front of her son's face it's like well the, they father, the husband told it wait what do you mean when she was having coffee when she brought the camera to the old guy uh-huh he said to her my wife said mirrors reveal who, oh. who you truly are or something like that. Okay, I missed that. So okay, she kind of like then. made the connection. But Okay, I missed that. But but you're right mm. though in the sense that what the uh, for me my takeaway was this felt like an unfinished movie. Yeah. And they it, skipped some some parts. <laughs> it was an hour and a half or they cut something or something. I well, know. I don't think that. I just think I really think this is his first movie. I think it's just a it just feels like an amateurish movie. Really is what it was. Mm. There's a lot yeah. of good ideas in the movie that don't really come to fruition in any meaningful way and it just feels sure. kind of empty. If and an hour and a half is pretty short for a movie and this movie felt like it was two and a half hours. The, Did it? The pacing was so fucking slow. <laughs> I found myself just drifting in and out of consciousness. Now I didn't fall asleep, but like I was just I was spacing out. I was spacing yeah. out. I was getting very distracted throughout the movie. Um and that's how it was with the other movie we tried to watch. Do you so you watched one. it. I didn't watch it. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> but it's a great movie. You know hilarious. <laughs> no shade. No shade. Yeah that that's why I say for like you know as good as it is atmospherically it just I don't know. Does it fall yep. short on like literally everything else? Like the plot right. didn't do anything. Like the plot was bad. Well, that's when I say the writing, the plot was bad. The dialogue isn't really all that great because there barely is any. It's mostly her being like, are you hungry? Yes, mommy. Like that was mostly it. I will say the acting <laughs> in the movie was pretty fucking good. I thought she was pretty I was good. Gonna, yeah, I, I, I agree. And I thought the kid was great. James Quinn Markey played the kid, Chris. He was real fucking creepy. Um, Kid actors, if like most of the time they're employed, it's to be fucking annoying. But he wasn't <laughs> like he knew what the director meant when it was like, "Yo, you got to be real fucking creepy, dude." Right. Like I feel he, like she was also good at picking up on his little changes, but they kind of just did it too much. Like we already knew. Well, and they just kept showing like these little changes, like oh he's eating more, oh he's dressing weird, he's combing his hair and he's proper and all this little weird stuff. It's like we already know he's a fucking weird. He's 
possess. Well, that's one of the good things that the movie did, I thought. Really? But, but it was also a shortcoming. It was a good idea because only a mother, or, well, not just a mother, but a mother specifically, would be able to pick up on like minor little, little changes yeah. in somebody, right? And yeah. it's just like a parenting thing. Like parents know when their kids are like dealing, you know, but most of the time, if they're good parents, they know if their kids are like having a hard time at school or something's going on, they're being bullied or whatever. <laughs> Bless you. Um, Thank you. Nobody put out three fairly spirits. Uh, they know <laughs> that that shit's going on. I'm an ordained minister, by the way, folks. So I <laughs> have the authority from God and man to bless it. Uh, so, yeah. But so that was cool because like a mother would pick up on that stuff. But again, didn't go anywhere yeah. because they didn't really play. A, like it would be psychologically fucking with this person if she's like, oh, my kid's being fucking weird. But am I just being weird or is he right. being weird? Like, what the fuck's going on? But again, didn't really amount to much. And then, like, there's this in the introduction of all these weird little, like, plot elements that didn't go anywhere. Like, again, the husband thing. They mention it, like, several times. Right. Doesn't go anywhere. The scar on her head that just magically bleeds for no reason. <laughs> what the fuck was that all about? I got into an yeah. accident a couple years ago, but it gets, it gets, uh, whatever she said, bothered or something. Like, yeah. what was that all about? We don't know. They never really think? went anywhere. And, like, the, 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 the son's obsession with the scar or something like he kept like she had the vision about him like ripping her scar open and then like touching her face weirdly yeah well they kept making like a point to bring up the scar but it, right. but it didn't really amount to much yeah. uh again outside of being just exposition that couple didn't really go anywhere other than seeing the bones of their dead kid like later on with the missing mm -hmm. tooth that's right? right yep um and, uh, yeah, it's just a very lifeless movie. Very, it's very just, there's no real intensity. It's not very, like, eerie or scary. Yeah. And it's just uneventful, really. Just nothing happens in the movie. Really, really yeah. nothing happens at all. And then, and then we get to the ending, which you were talking about oh, earlier, yeah. where she goes, she somehow figures out her kid went missing in the sinkhole and was replaced by whatever this thing is. And then she goes in there. In. She just goes into the sinkhole. Yeah, just go in. Hey. And she's crawling around, finds some creatures and her son who's still alive. And then she leaves, and the movie's over. Um, but they tried to make it seem like, oh, he switched places with yeah, the real they, son at the end. And they, they threw that in. They tried to do the Halloween ending where she. They tried like, to do the Halloween ending. Yeah, <laughs> she takes all these measures by the it's end of the movie. Up. Her apartment is like filled with mirrors, and she's photograph videotaping him 100 percent of the time, hmm. and like he's on a bike. So the videotape is like a little bit out of focus. His blurred, face is yeah. blurred. And she's like, oh, my, oh shit. And then oh, it ends. shit. And it's just unfortunately, you know, it's just uh, too much of this movie lacks like uh, those necessary things that make a, just a good movie in general. But again, it just lacks. It's just amateurish is what it feels like. That's why I said unfinished. It's like a lot of good ideas, but not yeah. really refined and honed. Uh, yeah. I think that's, yeah, I think that's a pretty accurate take. Uh, I don't, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was groundbreaking or really good. It was just kind of eh. Yeah. And then I was a little annoyed at like what this creature thing was. I wanted to know a little bit more about it. And then I had to sort of look it up. Dusty mentioned it last night before I watched it. I kind of had an idea yeah. going into it. But um, it's so the director, uh, Lee Cronin, he's Irish. And uh, there is a European folklore about changeling mm. british isle folklore yeah, yeah and changelings oh, are Wales, ireland scotland yeah changelings are creatures sort of in line with like fairies and there are evil fairies and good fairies and apparently they just like will swap your children out with theirs yeah if you leave your kids unattended they'll come and steal them and change places with them. yeah so i guess that's they just what want that a nice was. meal just maybe feed them and they won't take your um, kids you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> And and the movie hunger. the movie plays off of all like the folklore traits of changelings like they exhibit odd behavior they have right. abnormal traits that aren't found in human children uh, yada 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 um, and in upon reading it I think that the actual reality of the folklore is more interesting than the folklore itself as it often is men are scarier than monsters could ever be. Mm. Why the witch is so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. But in real life, the stories, the tales of changelings were a contributor to actual very real neglect, cruelty, and even murder among certain individuals. Oof. As many children, most often disabled and or ill of health, 
suspected of being changelings, were subjected to harsh treatment by superstitious communities wishing to rid themselves of what they believed to be a malevolent or unwanted intruder, much like the Salem witch trials here in the United States. I was going to say, yeah. Humans are so dumb to be <laughs> yeah. so smart. She's a witch! <laughs> She's bleeding! Kill her! Um, what the fuck? They're like 300 when they're throwing the babies. That yeah. Aren't right. Perfect off the cliff. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's oftentimes like the, the reality of these types of stories is a lot more interesting and scarier than the actual stories themselves. And then a movie came to mind uh, in that vein, and that is uh, Robert Eggers' The Witch. And we recently Ooh. talked about Robert Eggers when we reviewed uh, The Northman. Mm -hmm. The Witch, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but that is a movie about, uh, takes place in 16, the 1630s in New England. And uh, it's about a small community that get banished from a larger community because of, there's like a, you know, there's like a, um, they're having like some their their, their crops. Ah, the fuck! There's a <laughs> in my mouth. Good Lord. <laughs> anyway, oh fuck! The, this family gets like exiled from their community because of like there's like a famine and like fucking mm. their harvests aren't coming in. So right, yeah. They're of course to blame, and it's still in there. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> that movie really plays on the uh on both sides of the the thing right like it's it's a very good portrayal of like how fucking crazy people were during right. the, those those times yeah but also the main character is a fucking witch <laughs> or, right. or she is being like she is being uh <laughs> seduced by the devil himself into becoming mm -hmm. a witch yep. so it plays on both things it's like and it's kind of scary and like things like that and it's but it's very unnerving and it's a really well done movie now i don't expect everybody to be like robert eggers because he's a fucking genius but sure yeah um but yeah this movie kind of reminded me of that because it could have been that it could have played with like the folklore itself but also like the really cruel nature of mm. the reality of that folklore and how fucking stupid people are yeah, that's true. I guess it kind of did though with uh, the the two older people. How she was, uh, remember how she like went crazy a little bit, and then she tried to run them over with the car, and she went to a asylum or something, and then mm -hmm. got out, and then he still died or something somehow. Yeah, well, that's so I guess, and and that's again why I say like it, it it had little elements of things, but never right. really actually flushed them out. Because it could yeah. have been a much cooler story. Like, you could have actually cared about that couple. <laughs> you could have cared about whatever her trauma was. Right, dude. You just see her, like, slam her head. And it's like, okay. Yeah. She's just weird. You see her buried alive. And it's like, oh, okay, I don't really care. And the thing that sucks is that even if that woman never said, this isn't your boy, <laughs> I feel like we would have just known it wasn't his, her boy. For sure. I thought you know? the... Uh, the um, What's the word I would like to use? I guess revelation when she found out or when she knew for certain that it wasn't her son. Yeah. When she was trying to play the game. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was pretty well done. Yeah. It was a, it was a nice pretty, I think that was a nice like, uh, I don't know. But it seemed like she already knew because she fucking had a hidden camera that we never got to see what was on the thing. Oh my God. Not getting to see what was on the camera really pissed me off, bro. <laughs> Oh, and the man. old guy breaks it. Yep. All right, Dusty, what do you think of this? You're the one, you have all, you always got the good complaints, the Dusty complaints. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I mean, this, uh, you pretty much hit on a lot of it. I, uh, this is folklore, so it's an unoriginal idea already. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another movie, I think, called uh, The Hallow. It was 20, might have been 2010s sometime, maybe early 2000s. I don't know, I don't know right. if I've seen that one. 2015. Basically the exact same premise. Hmm. Uh, move to the country, fight demons in the woods, banshees and stuff. Okay. Right. Uh, changelings. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like 
I don't know what he did to get the budget to do this. Say, yeah, I'm going to write and direct my first movie. Apparently, he did something worthwhile because as seen in the movie, like the, as you said, the cinematography, um, yeah, the music, there was a lot of really good stuff that could have made this just an amazing movie, but it felt amateurish in the writing. So I don't, yeah. I mean, I wasn't compelled to feel that interested in the characters at all. Like, because you, you basically know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this kid's weird. She's going to freak out. Uh, so I don't, I mean, I, I did not really like this movie, but I also didn't hate it because there was some good stuff about it. I don't, I'm really indifferent on this movie right now because yeah, it I'm had potential way. and I could see why they would bring him on, uh, Lee Cronin to do evil dead rise. They're like, Hey, you ain't got to write anything. We've already got the <laughs> script. We've already got the story. We've already got well, the lore. Well, he Just actually, come direct it. No, he wrote it too. Oh, he wrote evil dead rise as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I don't know if he was hired. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if he was hired to write and direct or if he was, if he wrote it his own thing and brought it to them and was like, Hey, I have a story like and pitched it to them. And then they liked it. So, but from the trailers, we see evil dead rise is kind of a similar story. Like a like a mother yes. child relationship that's mm. clearly coming apart. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, again, like knowing that Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, like this, this franchise is like very important to them. I don't like, there has to be a reason why they brought him on. Like, Please. and again, yeah, but like the cinematography was good. <laughs> there was some good stuff about it. It just, it, it was amateurish and, and maybe unfinished. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But um, we'll see next week because. I'm fucking going to see it. <laughs> yes, sir. And like, again, one way or another, <laughs> I don't want it to seem like we're shitting on this movie. There's a lot of good stuff about it. The acting was good. Like it just, it just, it was all done in like a, the wrong movie. I feel like, but who can, I mean, it's his first mm -hmm. movie. What do you expect? You know, you can't, can't that's win right. them all. Can't win them all. Yep. And it made $3.4 million. So that's something. I don't know how much that's the budget something. was. I would take, I would take, 300 they take 3.4 million worldwide <laughs> yeah um yeah it had and it and and it's got critical appraise um it's it's got higher critical scores than user scores on most of these websites so that's generally a sign of like smart filmmaking and you know the fucking boring shit that critics love to talk about Mm. Um, but unfortunately the user reviews, not so much, not so good. It has a 5.6 on IMDb. Wow. Um, yeah, I think I gotta, I'm right in line with that. I gotta give it like a five, five. Dang. I, I'm gonna give it a five. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a five. Just pretty low. That is low. Oh man. And it's not because I hate it. It's just cause it wasn't much to even, it wasn't much to hate or like really is what it is. What it boils down to. It was very just empty. Like, Nothing movie. <laughs> um, I'd probably give this a six. Okay, it's fair. Yeah. Dusty, where you at? Um, I'll give it a five and a half. <laughs> Split the difference. Five and a um, half. Nice. There's, the, it's good that it's only an hour and a half because as you're sitting here watching it, you know, you're like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder where it's going to go there. And then the movie's kind of already halfway over and you're like, well, wait, what are we doing here? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm with Dan. I can't, can't love it, can't hate it. So it's a little bit better than average. Nothing, nothing right home about though. I would not, I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. guess it's recommendable, but. If you're bored and you really literally have nothing else to watch, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I would recommend this. Uh, but you know, I guess as so much as it serves as a little bit of a preview, maybe because for what we could expect from uh, Evil Dead Rise, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's good. I got faith in Lee, man. He turned this one around. I'm telling you, without Lee, this one is <laughs> you think so? Yep. I mean, listen, it's his vision. But so. he did write. He wrote this? Yeah. As man. well? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Well, okay, so uh, off again, when I say the when I say the writing is bad, I don't mean like the dialogue really. I mean there wasn't much dialogue to be bad, but it was right. it was mostly just the structure of the story itself. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, story yeah. wasn't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. So, it's like it's like me. I'm I'm like a creative person and if I had an idea like, "All right, I got this fucking idea for this thing and like here's what's going to happen." And it's like but then you need to refine it and write it and put it into like a an actual compelling story which was right. not would not done in this case it just <laughs> so i don't yeah. know we'll see and also too many fucking spiders in this movie I, i've had enough of the spiders yeah. too many spiders just didn't come with the fear and anxiety factor that you think a movie like this would well again you think of movies like hereditary and midsummer midsummer mm-hmm. specifically not a horror movie really but really fucking unnerving and like disturbing oh, yeah. at times and like <laughs> makes you really feel fucked up Hereditary yeah. again. I ain't never going to Sweden nah. just on that movie alone. Yep. So good luck. Hereditary, <laughs> not a particularly scary movie, <laughs> but one of the most anxiety inducing movies I've ever fucking seen. Yep. And, and it's like, so, you know, those movies, because they take the same elements that this movie had and they escalate them and escalate them and escalate mm. them. There really wasn't anything to escalate in this. It's just like, oh, I'm doing my wallpaper for the third day in a row. <laughs> mommy, I want breakfast, mommy. Hello, mommy. Like he <laughs> and like he was effectively creepy, but beyond the creepiness of it, yeah. Yeah, there was no tension. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nothing. No tension whatsoever. What's interesting though is Until he threw her on the ground. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Tension. Yeah, he, a little bit. He had enough. You're gonna question me? Bitch, what? <laughs> what were you gonna Let's say, play Marvin? A game. I was gonna say, interestingly enough, about Evil Dead Rise, it, it's it's showing that there are show times Thursday, probably midnight, so a day early. No, it's at seven p.m. Oh yeah, they do yeah, those. They, they do that they now. Do Thursday now, yeah, it helps yeah. add to the weekend box office. I might try to see it Thursday. Brief. They call Thursday it might be more chill. Yeah, I hate going to packed movies. Though I haven't been to a packed movie in a while. I told you when I went to see Ant Man, that shit was empty. I couldn't believe it. I was like, for a Marvel movie? Holy shit. And I saw it opening weekend. It's, I don't know. Um, I, but when I go and watch movies, it's usually a matinee. Like I'll watch a Monday or Tuesday matinee, like 10 or 11 in the morning. Nobody's in there. Wait till the weekend's over. Hit them early. Nobody's in there. It's been that way for a while. Yep. So we're all going to see Evil Dead this week, huh? Yep. Like we're all good? Yeah. One way or another. All right. Well, Tune in next week, folks, to see what we think of Evil Dead, Lee Cronin's second film. Uh, let us know if you like, uh, if you've if you've seen the hole in the ground, what you thought of it. I'd be interested to hear other people's takes. I can't imagine everybody anybody was like blown away by this movie, but you know, if you're out there, let us know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, next week, Evil Dead Rise, same time, same channel. Uh, tune in, and uh, we appreciate you listening to this episode. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Have a great week, Boston. everybody. Oh, sorry. What? I cut you off. <laughs> oh, no, no. That was my, that was my, you guys say Asta and see ya. And I'm saying have a good day. All right, everybody. Goodbye.